Hey everyone, welcome back to Bethany Urban Farm. This is Coral, and today I'm gonna to be talking you through the tomatoes that I'm growing in my tomato trial garden. So I was gifted um, a bunch of tomato seedlings from a dear friend, um, and they are all different kinds of varieties. I think she gave me 18 different kinds of tomatoes, um, and I am growing 17 varieties total. Um, three of which are ones that I had planned on growing. I had only planned on growing three. Um, and then 14 are from my, my dear friend. So the first um, group that I'm going to be going through are cherries, and then I will do saladettes, then ox hearts, and then beef steaks. So the first cherry tomato that I'm going to talk about are blueberries. Blueberries are one of the ones that I had planned on growing. They're from Wild Boar Farms. I uh, chose them uh, because of Jessica from Roots and Refu Refuge. Um, they are a 74 day variety, so pretty average. Um, they're an indeterminate vine and they have purplish blue um, cherry fruits. The second I'm growing is uh, Sun Chocola. Um, it's a hybrid, um, it's sweet and smoky flavored. Uh, apparently there's low acid and high sugar, which is uh, very palatable. Um, and it's a 70 day variety. And then we have Reason Straub. Reason Straub? <laughs> I understand what Jessica means now about the pronunciation. Uh, it's German for giant bunch of grapes. And this is a red cherry, uh, 75 days heirloom. And the size of the fruits is described as being a cherry pear. So on the larger side for a cherry. We then have green doctors. And I'm very curious to grow a green cherry tomato because I haven't seen that before. It's named after doctors Amy Goldman and Caroline Mayle. We have Sun Sugar, which is apparently very delicious. It's a yellow cherry at 75 days, and it's a hybrid. Number six, we have Sweet Aperitif. Uh, this one's 80 days. Um, it apparently has a thin skin that is very crack resistant, which is always desirable. Uh, and the flavor is described as being wine flavored and tropical flavored, which sounds quite interesting. Uh, number seven, we have Isis Candy. Uh, this is a rose-colored cherry. It's an heirloom. Uh, the flavor is described as rich and fruity, uh, and it's a 90-day variety, so that's the longest we've had thus far. Uh, Rapunzel, I'm really excited for. Um, they have clusters of up to 40 fruits on one vine, um, and it's a 70-day variety. And then finally, we have Black Opal, which is a black cherry. Uh, there are apparently 150 to 200 fruits per plant, which is pretty amazing. In the saladette category, we have Blush, which is sweet and fruity, it's 84 days. And then Jeanne Flamme, uh, which is 70 days, and it's an orange saladette. And uh, number 12, we have, so these are the ox hearts. We have orange strawberry ox heart, um, which apparently has few seeds and a complex taste. It sounds like I'm describing wines or coffees. <laughs> uh, and it's 80 days to maturity. Uh, and then we have um, Kosovo, which is 75 days. Um, and interesting, it was brought from Kosovo from, by a United Nations worker. I love hearing all of the different stories behind the heirloom tomatoes. Um, it can be one to two pounds uh, fruits and deep pink in color. All right, and then beef steak, which is my partner's favorite uh, category. Um, the first is Bloody Butcher, and this is an heirloom 55 days which is uh, amazing. I didn't actually know, I gave most of my Bloody Butcher seedlings away to my dad, and I wish I had kept more than one because 55 days, that's amazing for a beef steak. Um, apparently it's a really good multi-purpose tomato. Uh, and then 15, we have Carbon. It's black, beef steak, 80 days, heirloom, and it was the winner of the 2005 Heirloom Garden Show Best Tasting Tomato. Number 16, we have Paul Robeson. Uh, it's a Russian heirloom, dusky red and sweet, dense and smoky, and 70 days. And then finally, Dr. Witchies. Uh, it's an heirloom, 80 days, uh, famous on Roots and Refuge. Um, and of course, I had to try it because it's Jessica's favorite tomato and I've never tasted it before. And here I'm just placing the tomatoes I previously marked where I wanted each variety. I'm just grouping things together, like I have some cherries together, I have some really ornamental ones right up at the front. So I marked those um, with my plant markers and then I'm placing the transplants where I want them to go so that when I'm transplanting them I can just go straight through digging the holes and plopping the transplants in. So this is some 
nitrogen fertilizer that I've made by mixing grass with water and then leaving it in the sun for three days. So I'm just going to take the grass out and then um, put the water into my watering can and use that to water in the transplanted tomatoes. So this is an example of a really great transplant. Um, you can see it's really short and stocky. Uh, it's like this because it was under grow lights, um, really close, about two inches um, above the top of the plant. So here I'm using my Hori Hori knife and digging a hole uh, in my compost and below that the soil that I have laid directly on top of weeds. I laid this down about three or four months ago. Um, so I'm digging a nice hole there for the tomato and then plopping an egg in the hole. I don't have chickens unfortunately, so I just got local, organic, free-range eggs from the grocery store. I thought the uh, $7 was a very worthwhile investment for my healthy tomatoes. So those are most of my tomatoes planted. I still have a couple more to do, um, but I'm so excited to see them grow and to try all the different kinds and to give you guys feedback on how well they grow and what their fruit production is like, how disease resistant they are, um, all in my climate, which is the Pacific Northwest, which is a little bit difficult for um, hot things like tomatoes. Thanks for hanging out with me today while I planted my tomatoes, and I look forward to seeing you back here soon. Bye.